God bless you all this morning, brothers. 1 Samuel chapter 5 this morning. And uh, as we seen yesterday in chapter 4 that the ark had been captured. And they took it from Ebenezer to Ashdod, about 30 mile away. And in uh, Ashdod, they had um, what was called the Temple of Dagon. And inside, they had this statue of Dagon, which was half man, half fish. He was known as the Fertility and the uh, harvest um, god, the grain god. And he was known to be the father of Baal. And what they done is they brought the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God. It was like a trophy to them. That's how they trekked God. It was like a trophy. It was another god. We'll sit him in here in our temple with our other god, Dagon. And we know that God is, is not another god. There is only one god. He is the first and the last. There is no other god. Dagon is just a concrete statue, worthless, you know, can do nothing. But what they do is they bring the Ark of the Covenant into the temple. And what we see is the next day they get up, Dagon is flat on his face. And the people pick the statue up, put it back. And the next day they're coming again and there's Dagon again, led flat before the Ark of the Covenant with his hands and his head off, destroyed. And what we see, brothers, this is that these ungodly Philistites, you know, had a temple. And in this temple, they had their God. And what they done is they brought in what they believed, just another God, just like Dagon. And we see what happened. They could not have two gods within the temple. There can only be one master. And, you know, brothers, the same applies for me and you today, this morning. That there is only, as we are the temple of the living God, the Bible says. That we can only have one God within our life. One master. The book of Matthew tells us you can't serve two masters. You'll hate one or love the other, despise or hate one. But you cannot serve both God and money. We cannot have two masters within our lives. And it doesn't always have to be money, brothers. It can be materialistic things. It can be work. Um, whatever masters your life, whatever takes your time from God and serving God and becomes a master, it begins to rule your life. It's all you think about or all you do. It affects your church meetings and prayer and doing other things. Then it becomes a God. It becomes a God within your life. And God is a jealous God and God does not want... You know, he wants us to himself. Doesn't want us, you know, worshipping things that are worthless. Idols. Whatever we put before God is an idol, brothers. And Jesus said in Matthew that no one can serve two masters. And that's what we see here. They was trying to serve two. They was putting two in one place. But God shows them who the one and true living God is. And you know, today, brothers, so many people, so many people today are trying to serve two masters so many people today are trying to serve god but they're also trying to serve this world they won't let go of this world they're trying to hold on to this world so much and you know elijah said it best when elijah was at mount carmel you know and just before he's about to challenge the prophets of baal he said to the people how long will you waver between two opinions if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. And I don't think Elijah could have said that any better. If the Lord is God, then follow him. If that is who you say the Lord is, then follow him. But if you want to chase the world and run after the world and things of the world, then, you know, follow, f follow this world. Joshua also said in the book of Joshua... You know, he said, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day who you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Amen. See, Joshua, he said to the people, if serving the Lord is undesirable to you, then you choose this day who you're going to serve. Choose today. Don't waver amongst two opinions. Don't try to have two masters in your life. Don't try to have two gods within your life. It doesn't work. 
But choose today, he said. If you want to serve the false gods, you want to go, then go, serve them. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And you know, brothers, you know, we can see people waver between two opinions. We can see people trying to serve two masters. But you know, brothers, you know what we have to do? We have to say, they have to choose who they're going to serve. But as for me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord. If they want to chase the world and run after the world, then that's down to them. But as for me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord today. We're going to keep our eyes upon the Lord. We're not going to be people who waver between two opinions, who try to have two masters within our life. Because the word of God is teaching that we cannot do that. The master that we love should be God. The one that we despise should be this world. See, when Joshua told the people that, they said, far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord who brought us out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. It's the Lord who performed great signs. It's the Lord that's brought them through the Jordan and across to Jericho in the wilderness. It's the Lord that's done all this. They said, we will serve the Lord because he is our God. And then Joshua goes on to tell the people how he's holy and a jealous God. That he's a holy and jealous God. You know today brothers. Let us learn a lesson from this chapter. That. We cannot have two gods. Within our temple. And when I say that. I'm not classing Dagon. As a god. Because he was just a concrete statue. He was a false idol. Nothing else. God shows that. By Dagon being led flat with his arms and his head off, destroyed, useless, defeated. God has defeated him. But we see what happens to the people as well. When people choose to follow this world and follow these false idols and things of this world, only badness is awaiting them. Nothing good is waiting them. And we see the, the, the terrible things that happen to the people in this place. What we also see as well, brothers, that the Philistites said the ark of the God of Israel must not stay here because his hand is heavy on us and Dagon, our God. See, Dagon is powerless. Look, the hand of God is upon them. They, they know that they're powerless. Dagon has no power. God has allowed this temple to go here to show them who is, who is God. And they move it to Gath. And then a outbreak starts again and they bring it to Ekron and the people's crying out, let it go back to its own place, take it back to Israel. And the Bible says the outcry of the city went up to heaven. These people begin to cry out to God, brothers. They begin to cry out to God. They realised that the only thing worth crying out to is God. Not Dagon. False statues, false idols is not going to help them. And let me tell you, brothers, today, when problems come within our life, money will not solve it. Materialistic things will not solve it. Work will not solve it. But only God will. Only God has the answers. That's why he needs to be master of our life today, brothers. You know, and what I would say today, brothers, is like I've just said, so many times we can see, you know, people wavering between two opinions. We can see people trying to serve two masters. But you know what we have to do? We have to just look towards the Lord and say, as for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve God. We're going to keep our eyes on God. I'm going to, as the pastor of my own, I'm going to make sure that my family are living in a godly life that is set apart, that is different, you know, that is known to be a home that serves the Lord, teach my children the ways of God, and let my household be a household that serves the Lord. We don't waver between two opinions. And that's what people we need to be this morning, brothers. Our master is God. He is our Lord and God. You know, he is the one who has given us salvation and done so much for us. And he is the master of our lives today. Let's remember, brothers, that we're a temple of the Holy Spirit. And that there's only one and only only enough room. 
for the one and true living God in our temple. God bless.